This is some guy named Jay with Southeast Hip Hop Magazine. And we're about to get into this interview with K Love the Poet. But before we get into that interview with K Love the Poet, I just want to give a quick shout out. I want to give a shout out to another poet, Justin Soul Quest Tony. Justin Soul Quest has a new book out called The Evolution of Soul, A Journey Through Poetry. You can check out his book uh, on the internet. It's available on blacktopia.org in the media store. So definitely check out The Evolution of Soul, A Journey Through Poetry by Soul Quest. Available in the Blacktopia media store on blacktopia.org. I'm going to put the link in the information box below so you can check that out. All right. Now let's get into this interview with K-Love. Southeast Hip Hop Mag, we in the house with K-Love. How you doing, K-Love? I'm good. How you doing, King? Oh, yeah. Just uh, just ready to do this interview. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it, then. Definitely, definitely. Now, uh, now, let me ask you, how long have you been writing poetry and uh, how long have you been performing your work? Okay, so um, I started, I guess, writing when I was about... Maybe my. Um, hey, Caleb, you are. Uh, hold on, hold on. You're breaking out a little bit. Uh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I've since my sophomore year in high school. I just used to write to um, entertain my friends at lunchtime. We didn't have, like, a spoken word poetry department um, at the high school that I went to. Um, I grew up in Hammond, Indiana. And we just didn't, we didn't have that. So I didn't even know that was something that I could actually really, really get into. I just did it because I thought it was fun. And I felt like I had something clever to say. Um, and so it kind of just was a, a fun thing. Um, in high school, I started dating the guy that rapped. Um, and he encouraged me to do something with my poetry, you know, he didn't say what, I guess at the time, you know, something that would have been logical was like write a book, but he was like, you know, you should really do something with, with your poetry, and I, I, I didn't really do much with it um, during that time, but by the time I turned 20, um, the end of the year, I was going out on a date with a guy, um, I had broke up with the rapper guy, um, and I was going out on a date with the guy, and he said, um, I want to take you somewhere. I'm like, okay. And he didn't know where I had been. He didn't know much about what I was into, but he took me to a open mic poetry spot. And I remember going there just thinking to myself, I could probably do this for the rest of my life. And here I am <laughs> a lot of years later. Oh. Uh, you know, is that. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, uh, so you do this professionally. You know, this is how you eat, I right? I do. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Bread and butter. I've been doing it, um, professionally or full time as I say for almost nine years now. Oh, okay, okay. Now um yeah. now let me ask you this. What uh how well um do you make money off of your art? Uh you know, because we have a lot of starving artists that listen to what I do and um and you know they would like to know as well, uh you know, is it is it just is it sponsorships, is it live shows, is it merchandise, is it uh, it's selling books, audio. What are what are all different kind of ways do you you know? Well, you know what it started out um, with um, having a, a DVD. Um, someone did a DVD of my live performances for me, and eventually people started asking. You know, after you perform, they want to hear that again and again and again. And so um, I got smart and I, I I asked someone would do a DVD for me, and someone did. And that first DVD was called Reflections of Love. So when I would go out to the open mic set, which don't pay because it's something that you choose to do, um, I would bring my DVDs with me. And usually if the, if the poem was good or the people felt the poem, they would ask to purchase the DVD. And that started um, to create like a supplemental income for me. So I had a nine to five, but I also had the fact that I would go out and I would bring my product with me. But... More than just loving to perform and do spoken word poetry, I'm, you know, I'm a mentor before anything, so I've always worked with the youth, and that has served to my benefit because now, in addition to getting paid for doing shows and opening up for people and different things like that, I also um, 
have designed several curriculums that include poetry and spoken word and self-esteem building that I often get stopped into different high schools, colleges, community centers, and that helps the starving artists <laughs> not starve so much. Um, those type of things, you know, provide a little bit more of a consistent type of income for a quote-unquote starving artist. So um, it's not it's not just, you know, like I said, it's not just having DVDs or having merchandise. It's not just opening up for people or doing shows. It's also, you know, using what you have and finding a way to teach it and make it marketable to other people, you know, giving giving your medicine out to people. People will pay to have that in, in a lot of different variations. And when you can give it back to the youth, it plays a great thing. So um, there's a couple of things. I have a couple of, couple of uh, <laughs> different things that are working for me uh, at the time, and that's how I sustain myself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because when you're doing this kind of thing, you know, I know you have to have different. Uh, I don't know I, the, the the saying. Um, you got to have different pots on the stove or something like that, or different irons in the fire. Listen, yeah. and listen, I'm, I'm cooking. I'm cooking everything at once. It's Thanksgiving every day. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you definitely have to. Just a, just a bunch of different things, you know, happening at one time, but they all are are things that I'm passionate about. I, I really don't believe in doing anything that I'm not passionate about. And when you're dealing with um, the youth, you have to be passionate about that. You know, if you do them a disservice if you're not. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, when you're dealing with words, you tend to deal with thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And when you're dealing with the emotions of the people, you want to be responsible. Um, and when you're passionate about it, you can be more responsible with what you're writing. So it all works to create um, a way of life. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm glad you said, and also glad you, uh, you know, mentioned working with the youth too. That's something uh, that I get involved with. I get involved with this organization called Catch More Kids, and uh, uh -huh. we we have an event coming up this weekend, a, a Christmas toy give back. We're gonna have live performances and uh, you know, giving away food and um, you know, toys for the kids. And things like that. Got the bounce house out there. For everybody listening, you can go to catchmorekids.org and check that out. And um, possibly in the future, uh, we'd like to have you or something, you know, uh, doing some inspirational poems for the youth. Oh, I would, I would absolutely love that. I've been to, um, you guys are in which city and state? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, okay. I would love, love, love to come out there and, and talk about the youth. That's my, that's my first pass. And those. Spoken word is starting to be, you know, the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm known for. I'm a mentor before I'm everything. Uh, founder of a mentor organization called Lyric in Chicago, which stands for Let Your Rhymes Inspire Creativity. And so we use hip hop and spoken word poetry to teach character development and community activism within youth out here. And so, in addition to that, there are several programs that I'm responsible for concerning that, which are um, mostly female responsibility class like a class of treat like a queen, um, a program called Princess, which is for little girls ages 6 to 11, just restoring the royalty in our uh, our youth. So that's my primary focus. Poetry comes, comes second. And I use poetry just as a tool to communicate better with the youth. Ah, yeah, yeah, definitely, because, you know, they, that, that, the, you know, words are powerful, you know, and the, and the kids pick up they, on that. They, they, they respond to rhymes. They respond to hip hop. You know, you can get them to listen to a lecture if it's in a poem form or a rap form quicker than you can get them to just listen to you talking. So, um, uh, and very effective tool. Hello? K Love. Huh? I'm here. Yeah, you broke out real bad towards the end. Uh, I said, um, it's easier to get them to listen to a poem or a rap than it is to get them to listen to a lecture. Oh yes, oh yes, and you gotta definitely yeah. use that, you know, to deliver the message, you know, nowadays. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh so, yep, that's, that's where I am with it. Definitely. Now, do you have uh, any websites to that that you'd like to plug? I do have a website. Um, you can go to www. Kloveshepoet. com. That's K L O V E T H E P O E T. Um, I do have a YouTube channel, K Love Poetry, K L O V E Poetry. Um, and in addition to that, I also have um, Facebook page. I have a couple of pictures on Facebook. Please don't tell uh, Mark 
I do, but um, I have um, a couple and you can be added on my K Love Poetry page, which is K Dash L O V E Poetry. Um, and then I also have a fan page, um, just K Love the Poet. So any of those ways are really effective ways to reach me. Definitely, definitely. I'm gonna have those uh, links in the information box too, because uh, YouTube. That's one of the places I'm gonna have this posted as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, um, now getting back to you as a poet, though, uh, what you know, what inspires you to do what you do? You know, just <laughs> living, living life. I live and and going through it, trying to figure it out. The human. <laughs> Just the experience of life. Life is so dynamic on so many levels. It's so, it's so, <laughs> it's so, it's like a, a huge coat with like a million gazillion pockets. And so just finding your way through all of those pockets, uh, it constantly inspires me to write, whether it's out of the frustration of not being able to get to the pockets you want to get to quick enough, or inspiration about what you find in the pocket that you're in at the time. Um, so, you know, it's my therapy uh, when I'm stressed out, and it's what I do to show how appreciative I am of, of the life that I live and the things that I see. Ah, okay, okay. Now, uh, now let me ask you this. Who are some of your favorite poets? <laughs> That's a good question. Okay, <laughs> um, so... I guess if we're talking about historical, internationally known, I would say um, I'm, I'm definitely more influenced by hip hop than I am by traditional poetry. Um, top of my list off the bat is Lauryn Hill. Um, a huge Lauryn Hill fan, a huge Tupac fan. Um, and so their words um, inspire me the most as far as it goes, like international or. Or, you know, just historically known, I guess, you know, known all over the world. Um, but outside of that, man, the people in my, in my, in my city, in my close reach, like the people that I talk to and see every day are huge inspirations for me um, as far as writing is concerned. Um, I, you know, I can start with my mentor, um, a sister by the name of Dina Dean. Uh, that's who kind of scooped me up and took me under her wing as, wing as soon as I got on the poetry scene in Chicago. She's a very talented writer, um, also an author, um, as well as uh, my sister, Sharon Celeste. She's a, a, a dynamic writer and performer, um, and these are the two women that I, I looked at when I first started doing poetry on the scene. I, I looked at them and, and thought to myself, I want to have whatever it is they have. Um, outside of them, there's so many, and Lord... I know I'll miss a couple of names, but people that I just enjoy hearing, um, a sister by the name of Andrea, Andrea Beck, she's so, 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 so dynamic, um, a brother by the name of Momentum, ridiculously talented, um, a brother by the name of Allende, and Allende is a little bit younger, but just ridiculous, ridiculously talented, and then I can name almost all of the in my um, mentor organization, Lyric, you know, everybody from the young man, uh, Honey Proof, to um, Sound Poet, to Like a Nate Gaffar, to, uh, it's so many of them. I got so many kids, I can't even name all <laughs> their names, but let's just say the entire Lyric squad, Tony Mono, all of them, everybody, everybody, everybody. Um, so I have a lot of inspirations. I'm a brother by the name of Harold Green. He's so dynamic. Um, yeah, the, the list goes on. Chicago is plentiful in, in talent, actually, as it pertains to the arts and spoken word, poetry specifically. Um, we have, in my opinion, we have some of, some of the greatest to, to do it out of here. So I'm, I'm constantly inspired, you know. If, I, if I'm trailing with, you know, not being able to, to feel something, all I got to do is go out to an uh, open mic in Chicago. And that all of those things can change. Oh, I forgot to say, brother, real talk. That's my bro, too. Just dynamic. Okay, yeah, good, good. I'm gonna definitely check a lot of those, uh, a lot of those poets out too. You know? Please, please. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, um, now getting back to the uh, the thing about the hip hop 
and 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 this and that. Now a, a lot of your pieces, they sound better than than rappers. Than a lot of than, than most rappers, you know. Uh, have, Thank you. Oh yes, oh yes. Now have you ever considered, uh, you know, just recording a hip hop album or, or anything like that, or just performing as a rapper? Um. Uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever call it a rapper. I'd probably say an MC. Um, oh yeah. And I think there's a, a great difference between being a, a rapper and being an MC. Um, so, to answer your question, I actually do rap. <laughs> um, I was trained by, in my opinion, one of the best to ever do it in Chicago, a brother by the name of Fanon. Um Super duper MC extraordinaire. 23-year MC. Um, my partner, he also started the Lyric Mentoring Organization with me. And so being around a hip-hop artist um, <laughs> that's a master of his craft, uh, I couldn't help but to, to take up some of, some of those skills. And so um, I have a couple of rap songs. I actually was going to release um, a mixtape that featured some rap on it, um, but not not a whole rap album. I wouldn't do that. That's not my, that's not my first love like that. But I do it enough to be able to do it every once in a while. So I'll rock a cypher. And I do have a couple of songs that I plan to release um, in the upcoming year, more than likely. But yeah, I do rap. And I do. I have a great appreciation for it. Um, like I said, just studying under the MC, um, I, I gained a great respect for how challenging it can be to, to, to be an MC and to actually be good. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, because that's definitely a skill, you know, not everybody can just pick up a mic and rock it like that, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, and I, you know, from years back, I, I totally was oblivious to that, like, I didn't, I didn't know what went into it, um, but, you know, I took um, his MC school course, and I realized, like, timing, rhythm, breath control, all of those things matter, you know, just being able, like with a poet, you can say a bunch of words and you don't have any time frames or any slots that you need to get them in. You don't have, a, like, a syllable restriction. Yeah. But with being an um, MC and writing bars, it, it's definitely different. So trying to say something profound in a short amount of time with as little words as possible because if you got too many words, it's too hard to say um, to, the, to the timing. And, you know, just being able to say it without sounding like you're getting ready to die from being out of breath. <laughs> yeah. Very challenging. Oh, yes. Oh. And then I think going to talk about the skill that it takes to actually make a hit, something that people are listening to and something that's relevant and all of that. So, yeah, big ups to all the MCs out there. I got much respect for MCs. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, let me ask you, who are your favorite MCs? Mm, okay. Favorite MCs, all right. So again, I know it sounds redundant, but we're starting with Lauren Hill again. Oh yeah, one, <laughs> one of the of nicest. My, man, she's just, she's just great. Um, and this is like I said, this is on a uh, international, historically known level. Um, Lauren Hill, Tupac is at the top of the list, and I have all I have reasons for different ones. Lauren Hill because she's so versatile. Um, she can do a multitude of things, um, and her rhyming style is unorthodox, but she makes it work. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the song, how many mics for her verse, or how many mics was so, it has so many words in it, but she was able to freak it and make it so dope, um, the way that she delivered it, and so I love her for her versatility, um, to talk for his passion, um. You know, you can feel, he, he has the ability to make you feel when you hear Tupac, he can, he can quickly guide you into whatever spirit that he's in. Um, uh, Eminem is, is definitely oh, yeah. hands down my favorite uh, lyricist as far as like being able to really freak the words and, and hit those similes and metaphors and alliteration. Yeah, and have very, those, very, oh, I was going to um, say, and have those multiple syllable Rhyme schemes and stuff too. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's on another level. People, you know, people don't don't really uh, rock with him a lot just because of um, you know him not not necessarily being a, uh, an African, but 
good is good, in my opinion, and, and that boy is bad. Um, oh, yeah. I also am a, a huge fan of Jay-Z. Um, I like Jay-Z because of his confidence in his delivery, because he has the ability to create swag. Yeah. He has the ability to say something um, <laughs> in a way that kind of is arrogant, but it's not the type of arrogance that you hate. It's like, it's like the type of arrogance that you can't help but to love. Yeah. Because he says it so confidently and with so much, you know, just with so much flair and, and swag. I love, love, love his music. Um, and then I would say Nas for his subject matter. I like, I like the fact that he brings real things to the table. Um, huge Dead Prez fan. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> their music is so renegade. <laughs> They'll say anything. I'm surprised. That the government ain't trying to abduct them or something like <laughs> right now because the things that they have said um, on wax has been unbelievable to me. And I found out about them late in the game, but I think that they are absolutely dope. Oh, yeah. um, Kendrick Lamar, super duper dope. J. Cole, super dope. Um, cancer Rapper! Cancer Rapper, man, out of Chicago. I actually know this young man personally. Um, he was semi-mentored by myself, my partner, um, and a brother out a brother the name of Brother Mike. Like, most of the people that work with you from Chicago kind of, like, had this family kind of thing going. And so um, I get a chance to see Chance when he comes back home every once in a while. And I'm just so proud of him. His music is, is so Chicago. Um, and I love him for that. Oh, yeah. And so that's on the, that's on the nationally known level. Now, now, before you get to your independent, before you get to your uh, maybe uh, independent smaller skill list, I just want to say something about ask you about Chance the Rapper right quick. Uh, did you uh, did you get to check out his performance on Saturday Night Live? Did you check out Saturday Night Live? Uh, I didn't check. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really watch TV, so those type of things I have to get around to uh, TV. But I did watch the Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I totally gave up watching TV like nine years ago. Oh yeah. But, I'm the- <laughs> When I'm over someone's house or something like that, I can catch those different things. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I don't. I don't watch TV. I, I'm usually on YouTube if I do watch something like that. But uh, but Saturday Night Live is one of the very, very, very few shows I actually watch, and um, not you know not religiously anymore. But um, but yeah, his his performance on Saturday Night Live was so good. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna start checking more often because I think I was sleeping a little bit. Chance is just Chance is somebody that I can look at. In awe, like, wow, I can't believe this was a young man coming to the open mic, the youth open mic that we used to do, or the youth open mic that we used to frequent all the time. And, like, I can't believe how his life has changed. Like, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I can't to, to talk to him about it. Um, he did something called Tip Fest in Chicago over the summer, and I was backstage with him. And I just was telling him how proud of him I was. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm just amazed by you. Like, I just, you know, he just, he just proved that like, dreams really do come true, and it can happen so fast that you you don't even know. Um, he's also just proved that, like, you you got to have faith in these, these kids. Like, people, I can't imagine how many people looked at him and was like, you know, him and his little silly little rap career. Because it seems like now all young men want to rap. And, you know, everybody underestimates the, the ability that, um, it's out there for them to actually like really use that and, and become something. Um, and so I'm, I'm just very proud of him. So which leads me to my, my, my other scale of um, artists that I love. Again, I have to start with the youth that are in my national organization. They are they are dynamic and I'm inspired by them. And though, you know, some of their music um, <laughs> uh, isn't necessarily... Um, something that people in my age range would highly rock with. Um, I rock with the fact that they're, they're using their pen and their lyrics to create um, music instead of causing violence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I'm proud I'm proud of the music that they make. So again, I have to say Honey Proof. Again, I would have to say um, a group of young men called Vice Versa. I would have to say... Um, um, I would definitely say for Nam, you know, um, like I said, Super MC from Chicago, ridiculously talented and dope. I would say um, a brother by the name of Chad Deuce and Spear, 
from Chicago, another city of a million years in the game, uh, just dope music, good music that makes you feel good on the inside. I'll have to say Real Talk. Um, he is from Chicago, out of Atlanta right now, um, doing some work with Outcast and, oh. and some other people, just <laughs> ridiculous when it comes to the bars and, and making music. I would have to say um, Artemis, another young lady that's a part of my um mental organization. I know I'm doing this all out of order. Some of them are part of the mental organization and some are just my friends and colleagues, but this is my list. Um, I love, love, love um, the young ladies that are, that are really bringing the bars right now. So I said Artemis, she's a part of the mental organization. But also um, a young lady by the name of um, Freddie Oso is another one of the youth. Um, another young lady by the name of um, I'm going to stop right now. Um, oh, man, I can't think of a name right now. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to that. Okay, okay. A lot, a lot of these artists are, are just making making music for the time. Um, you know, in between their turn up tracks, <laughs> okay. they are making music that, that, that can that you to move a, mu- a, a movement, and I'm proud of them. I open mics and stuff. I turn all the way up with them um, because I know I know music is therapy. Oh yeah. I know music. Is oh, there it is. The last young name that I, I meant to remember. Um, this young lady is, is like is currently really really blowing up with her music. Her name is Bella Bar. Bella Bar. I'm sorry. And that's Bob. That's B A H H S. That's no R. And it um Bella Boss and she just recently got a lot of um internet publicity for just the work that she's been doing as far as the protests in Chicago are concerned. Such a little little old girl in, in stature, but such a big spirit, such a powerful voice. Um, definitely one of the young people that's leading this revolution that's happening in Chicago right now and she's doing it via her music, um, and just just being being present and aware, and bringing enlightenment to her, her generation, and so, I'm so proud of those, those young ones, and like I said, they're learning under the tutelage, a lot of them are learning under the tutelage of MCs like Fanon, MCs like Real Talk, you know, that, that just take time to go to the open mics to deal with the youth, and, and to, um, you know, just give them some structure with that gift, you know, all of these gifts of, of, of lyrics are weapons mm-hmm. that can easily be used for destruction or uplifting and so when you know the youth are, young, are humble enough to have a mentor or to allow an uh, older person to impart some wisdom on how to use the gift in their life is always a good thing and so shout out to all of those names that I, that I mentioned um, I appreciate you guys and your contribution to music oh yeah definitely now also uh Send me send me links to some of these people, some of the underground people that you uh, that you named and mentioned too, because I want to check them out. Yeah, that that's amazing. I definitely will. I definitely will. Definitely, definitely. Now, um, now, now, getting back to you though, what kind of sub for people that's not familiar with you, uh, you know, right now listening to this interview, what are some of the subjects that you talk about in your work? Um, I said, I said if I, if my poetry had to be listed. Um, category in a, like a library, I would speak on self help. <laughs> okay. You know, it's, it's um, anything that a person goes through, I probably have written a poem about. <laughs> you know, whether we're talking about life, whether we're talking about death, whether we're talking about love, relationships, the good ones, the bad ones, um, self esteem issues, um, making mistakes, uh, you know. Correcting them, sexuality, sexuality uh, spirituality, um, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a wide range. Um, the violence, of course, is going on in my city. The beauty of my city, um, being a woman, being a black woman, being black, <laughs> all of those things you can catch, you know, just, just figuring out what we have to survive. Um, you know, the things I've, I've learned, um, 
ways of life that I've, I've adopted, you know. All of that. You can get you can get all of that. And then every once in a while, I just get a couple of braggadocious poems where I'm just flexing with the lyrics just because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, now, what are what are some of your favorite pieces that you've done? Uh, I really can't say that I have favorite pieces. I do have, you know, it all depends on what I'm going through in life at the time. You know, uh, so depending on what I'm going through, there might be a poem that's just in my sphere more often than others to do. Um, right now, I'm going to write a poem called um, I Feel Good, and it's a spinoff of one of my colleagues, one of my brothers, his name is Jason. He's a poet from Chicago. He wrote a piece um, called I Feel Good. And it's just a poem about feeling good, you know, how everything in your life is imperfect, but for some reason you still just feel good. And I just got to thinking about that, like, man, it's so important to have pieces like that, you know? Like, man, we could write about pain all day and sadness and sickness and not having enough and all of that. Wouldn't it be good to have a poem that just talks about feeling good for those few <laughs> couple lot of moments that we get to just feel good, you know? Even if it's only like three minutes, I try to really, really like feel the feel good moments of life. You know, when I when I have a moment of when I don't feel any physical ailment, when I, you know, have enough money, when I I feel happy, something made my day. And I'm feeling loved. I just try to really just pause and just say thank you, and like live in that. And so it'd be so good to have a poem that um that I can do when I just feel good. And so I, that's what I've been working on for the last uh, couple of days. Oh. And so I, yeah, to answer the question, I guess I really don't have a favorite poem at all. It just depends on what I'm going through at the time. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, what what what's a, what's a crowd favorite? When you're performing, what? Okay, what? now, crowd favorite. <laughs> people, people constantly request the million dollar melon and poem. Oh, like yes. That, apparently, that is a very big deal. Um, when I uploaded that picture, I, I mean, when I uploaded that video, I never expected for it to reach the magnitude that it has. Um, I think we're at about 700,000 views. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's still view. I just, before you call, I just was looking at it again on my Facebook, and people are still commenting. Every minute, almost, on the, on the post. And I'm like, well, how? I'm not even getting these notifications anymore. I guess I have to start somebody to stop notifying you of people that are commenting on it. Um, and so that's a favorite. Um, um, then here's some of my older works that are people's favorite, um, like this poem called Bougie. That's one of my first poems. Um, if I Was Your Wife, that was one of my first poems. Um, more, more newer poems are like, uh, the Power of Thought. I wrote a poem about uh, the law of attraction and just how powerful our thoughts are and how thoughts really create and shape our reality. Mm -hmm. um, that's very big. Um, I wrote a poem about being a woman called Watch Me Work. That's really big. People request that. Um, I wrote a poem about Signs of Land that's um, highly requested. Um, and I guess <laughs> top of the list for most women now is my poem called on the internet it's called Custom from Out the Mirror but it's actually called Self Love and it's just a poem about a woman myself a time that I had to remind myself of who I was I had totally let my crown fall got caught up in a relationship that wasn't good for me and I just totally lost myself in it and um, so that poem is following right behind Million Dollar Melvin with 120,000 views Right now, so I had a couple of them out there. Okay, okay, yeah, because uh, million dollar melanin. That's that's a uh, that that's a viral hit right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 amazed. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm everything. Oh yes, oh yes. Now, um, do do you freestyle or can you freestyle or is that something you you do as well or? Um. I'm not really a big fan of freestyling. Um, I get pushed to freestyle, like I said, being around the MC. <laughs> I get pushed to freestyle a lot, but that's not something I'm, I'm thoroughly interested in. I can do it a little bit, but it's not my strong system. I, I write. 
Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, that that cancels out my follow up question. I was gonna ask if you wanted to, you know, maybe spin a little something, yeah, for for the podcast. Oh no, I'll spin something. I just want to spin a freestyle. I'll spin a poem that I have. Okay, okay. Um, well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna get the poem separate. I'm gonna get that after the interview when we do the drops, so I could uh, okay. upload that one separately. But yeah, definitely. Thank you for that content. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Now, um. Now what now what projects are you currently working on? Is there anything that you're currently working on or anything that you uh have like any project that you're pushing right now or what? Well, like I said, my first priority is to, to the youth that I'm mentoring, so um, I'm very passionate about my princess program, which is the self awareness program for little girls ages six to eleven. I run all of these po- these programs out of pocket, no government funding. So, you know, raising money to do that, um, is definitely a challenge. And so February the 8th, my annual birthday show, it happens to fall on a Monday this year, so I'm going to do the concert on a Monday. Um, this concert is always, always sold out. Um, it's been being sold out since 2013. Um, and so this will be my third year doing it. And the name of this concert is called Alkaline. Um, and it's called Alkaline for a bunch of reasons. Everything I do is always symbolic. And it has plenty of meaning to it. So... Um, it's called Alkaline because, one, the Alkaline lifestyle slash diet is a, is a lifestyle and a diet that I'm greatly aspiring to um, master. Um, if you follow the teachings of Dr. Savy, it talk, he talks about how all of the diseases that we suffer from are really one disease, and the one disease that it is is mucus. And if you can reduce the amount of mucus in your system, you can, um, you know, reduce the chances of disease and you can totally reverse disease within your body and so you know he urges us to eat and drink um alkaline and so alkaline um a a a fruit or vegetable that is considered alkaline is anything that has a ph of seven or better so i'm turning 34 this year and three plus four is seven and so i'm under the spell of seven and i'm really really into numbers so I'm under the spell of seven, and so for my life, I want everything to be a seven or better. You know, seven represents completion, and so that's what I'm looking for in my life. Um, I'm looking to be healthy on all levels, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, spiritually, all of that. And so um, in addition to that, L-I-N-E, which is the end of alkaline, is um, another acronym that stands for the people that I plan to tribute in the show. I plan to tribute Lauren Hill, Indy Irene, Nina Simone, and Erica Badu. Um, I feel like the contribution that they've given to music is good food for mm-hmm. the people. And so I'm taking some of their most famous works and putting my spin on them and actually honoring them with a tribute. Live band, vocalist, um, I'm going to be giving out 100 bottles of alkaline water, alkaline fruits and vegetables on deck. Um, and I'll also be selling copies of my um, newest DVD, which is called Broken Cycles, that came out last year. So I am, um, that's my newest project. It's also going to be a fundraiser for the Princess Program as well. The tickets just went on sale uh, the day before yesterday at $10 on Eventbrite right now. Price uh, increases in about a month. And so I'm encouraging all my people in Chicago that want to check it out to go and grab the tickets now. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm working on the most right now. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I got a question about the alkaline water, too. Because um, I used to, uh, they, they have a health food, they have some health food stores here in Charlotte um, where, you can, where you can get the, you know, the, the alkaline water, um, you know, because um, I, I, I went to some seminars about that, about the, uh, about the alkaline water, and they did the experiment, you know, pulling your arm and stuff like that when you, you know, and... All this and that. Um, let me ask you something. I know it's uh, when you use those uh, those th- that that filter that they got. I know that filter is, is expensive <laughs> to get. Um, it's it, it you're you're supposed to drink that within like two days or something, right? Because uh, like during like if you don't drink it up, like it loses its uh, potency or something like that. Or okay, I haven't heard that, um, but I don't I don't do the filter thing. I, I actually use something else doing my alkaline water. Yeah. But um, our alkaline water that's out that you actually can get your hands on the steep you up. 
Fiji Fiji water has um, seven pH, so it's considered alkaline as well. Oh, okay. So Fiji, okay, Fiji water is okay, because uh, because yeah, here, here in the health food store, they they uh they point when you talk about the alkaline water, they point you to the thing with the filter, <laughs> or they. Yeah, or they, and they, maybe it's just the city you live in, because we actually have companies that make alkaline water in our health food store. So oh, okay. A thousand different brands that you can get in Chicago. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. We we're not we're not we're not lucky with that. Then they try to they try to hit you in the head and. They act like they're the only ones that got it, and you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um, oh yeah. Well, definitely. I'm, I'm gonna start drinking Fiji. I don't drink tap water at all. Uh, I'm, a, you know, I get bottled water, but I, you know, I try to. I, I'm gonna start getting just mostly Fiji water then. You know, if that's the the most alkaline of the waters. You know. Yeah, I totally understand that. Oh yeah, um. Well, definitely, I, I I really thank you for this interview. Uh, you know, again, um, you know, just just thank you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to. Uh, I'm, I'm all out of my questions. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm definitely glad to have you. And in the future, uh, anything, any any uh, like show dates or anything. Um, even although you know I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, we got people that check out the websites from all over. You know, Chicago, Arizona. You know, any area that you're primarily at, we got people that check out the website, check out the links and the, the email blasts and things like that. So, um, so definitely, uh, send me any, you know, any, any show flyers, uh, any information on your, uh, upcoming projects, DVDs, just all of that. Just send it to me and, uh, we'll definitely get it up there. Well, thank you so much for taking time out, thinking of me to, to have me on this interview. And great, and I will definitely keep you in a loop with anything that I have coming up. And I look forward to staying in contact with you. Definitely, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, now hold the line. I'm gonna get some drops and stuff. <laughs>